Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Sorry, had to turn off my alarm before it went off and deafened you. Today is Thursday the 3rd, and we're going to start with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this morning that we have to come before thee and to learn of thy words. We're grateful for thy love and support and kindness. We're grateful for the spirit that enlightens our minds. And we ask thee to please bless us with a teachable heart and mind that we can we can be prepared to hear thy messages this weekend. We're so very grateful for General Conference and for the prophet and apostles and all those who are going to speak for their preparation and we ask that thou please bless them with strength and courage and and bless them to feel of our love for them we're so very grateful father for all that thou hast done for us and will do we love you so very much and we say these things in the name of jesus christ amen okay so today is our general conference talk. Uh, under Prayerful, it is Personal Revelation by Boyd K. Packer, October 1994. Okay, so um, it's called Personal Revelation, The Gift, The Test, and The Promise. Um, he's... It's a very good talk. He directs it to the youth, but I think it's applicable to anybody who is wondering how they're going to get personal revelation this weekend or at any point in their lives. He says, I speak to the youth of the church who now face perilous times. As the Apostle Paul, as the Apostle Paul prophesied, <laughs> that was hard to say, would come in the last days in order to protect in order to prepare you and protect you, I will tell you, as plainly as I can, what I have learned about personal revelation. Now, I also think it's applicable to us because we all need to be prepared and we all need to be protected. We all need that. So, um... <clears throat> He's talking about how we're dual beings, about how we are a spirit and also a mortal. Um, and physically we learn with our eyes, our ears, touch, feel, these are the ways that we learn. But if you learn by reason only, you will never understand the spirit and how it works, regardless of how much you learn about other things. Um... He says, the spirit learns in a different way than does your intellect. So if you think that you can just study, 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 and you'll know exactly how to get personal revelation, you're probably not going to get very far because though we learn a subject a certain way, for me, if I want to learn something, I need to watch somebody do it. I need to write down the steps and then I need to do it myself. By writing down the steps, it like cements in my brain. But that's not how my spirit learns. So he says that he will use words like see, hear, and feel to teach about revelation, but he will use them as they're used in the scriptures. So even though see, feel, and hear are physical traits and how we learn, we see, we feel, and we, we hear, and we feel, to learn a, a physical thing, it's different for our spirits. He talks about how we can learn all things through the Holy Ghost. This talk is broken up into many subsections. Um, but for prayer, he says, You have your agency and inspiration does not, perhaps cannot, flow unless you ask for it or someone asks for you. 
No message in scripture is repeated more often than the invitation, even the command to pray, to ask. Prayer is so essential, is so essential a part of revelation that without it, the veil may remain closed to you. Learn to pray, pray often, pray in your mind, in your heart, pray on your knees. Uh, prayer is your personal key to heaven. The lock is on your side of the veil. Um, but that is not all. To one who thought that revelation would flow without effort, the Lord said, You have not understood. You have supposed that I would give it, give it unto you when you took no thought, save it was to ask me. But behold, I say unto you that you must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask me if it be right. And if it is right, I will see, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Therefore, you shall feel that it is right. So earlier we were talking about studying and how this is how we learn a physical thing with our intellect. It's not exactly how our spirits learn, but we are supposed to study. That's not the only component. Study alone will not do it. I hope you're getting <laughs> The gist of the talk, because I'm just trying to hit the, the highlights here. And then he talks about the still small voice, um, which you feel more than you hear. Um, even though it is described as a still small voice and that we are to listen to the whisperings of the spirit, people describe it as I had a feeling. Which could confuse some people who've never felt the spirit before. The prophet Joseph Smith exp explained a person may profit by noticing the first intimation of the spirit of revelation. For instance, when you feel pure intel intelligence flowing into you, it may give you sudden strokes of ideas so that by noticing it, you may find it fulfilled the same day or sooner. Those things that were presented unto your minds by the spirit of God will come to pass. And thus, by learning the spirit of God and understanding it, you may grow into the principle of revelation until you become perfect in Christ Jesus. Revelation comes as words and revelation comes as words we feel more than hear. Nephi told his wayward brothers who were visited by an angel, ye were past feeling that ye could not feel his words. Um I think we talked about this when when we studied this chapter. Um There's like things in there, but I can't get them out. Um, we do not seek for spectacular experiences. President Spencer W. Kimball spoke of the many who have no ear for spiritual messages. When they come in common dress, expecting the spectacular, one may not be fully alerted to the constant flow of revealed communication. And this I thought was interesting because if we're trying to have personal revelation and if we're looking for some spectacular experience we're probably going to miss it right so let's say that we're looking for some well if we're looking for some something spectacular some voice from heaven to come down and tell us exactly what to do um i was talking to starla a couple weeks ago and she's like I'm just looking for some guidance, some direction in my life. And every time I go to the temple or I pray or I fast, all I hear is wait, 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 just wait, just wait. And she's wanting Heavenly Father to tell her what her next step is. She's like, okay, do I stay in Texas? Do I move back to Utah? Do I try to find a different teaching job? Do I do this? She just got to Texas and she, when we had spoken... She was like, I just want to know what to do next. But he's telling her, he's telling her to wait. And she's looking for this big, like spectacular experience, not like a voice from heaven to come down, but like, okay, Starla, here's what you're going to do next. You're going to blah, blah, blah. And your husband's coming on the 14th of May. So just stay here and wait and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not that he's saying, wait, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm not going to tell you what you're going to do because Things will happen naturally and you will know naturally by the still small voice and by a burning in your bosom. Just wait. He's telling her to wait and she's over, kind of overlooking the wait. 
because she wants to know what comes after the wait. But honey, you're not waiting if you continue to ask. Uh, so that's just a little, a little thing there. Um, and then he goes on to talk about faith. The flow of revelation depends on your faith. You exercise faith by causing or by making your mind accept or believe as truth that which you cannot by reason alone prove for certainty. The first exercising of your faith should be your acceptance of Christ and his atonement. Be believing and your faith will be constantly replenished. Your knowledge of tr the truth increased and your testimony of the Redeemer, of the resurrection, and of the restoration will be as well will be as a well of living water springing up unto everlasting life. You may then receive guidance on practical decisions in everyday life. And then he goes on to talk about some things that can help facilitate some personal revelation, mainly the word of wisdom and music. Your body is the instrument of your mind. Your emotions, the spirit, and the body come closest. Oh, your body is the instrument of your mind, period. In your emotions, the spirit and the body come closest to being one. What you learn spiritually depends to a degree on how you treat your body. That is why the word of wisdom is so important. So can we expect to receive personal revelation when we are destroying our body when we are taking in that which is bad for it not just coffee tea alcohol vaping you know tobacco things like that but excess amounts of sugar or not giving it the proper nutrients it needs taking in the right vegetables fruits that sort of thing I was guilty okay sugar mm, sugar I still want it I want it so bad all the time but was I doing my body any good? No. Was I treating my body like a temple? Where do we go when we really want personal revelation? We go to the temple when we really desperately need answers. Where do we go? The temple. But they say that our body is a temple. And can we receive personal revelation when our body is not being treated as such? Then he talks about music. He says, secular music may be inspiring in a classical or popular sense, but it will not prepare your mind to be instructed by the spirit as will sacred music. Um, and then he talks about reverence and he says, do not ever disturb prelude music for others for reverence is essential to revelation. Be still, he said, and know that I am God. So he's given us a few things here, right? Here's how you hear the spirit. Here's how you can prepare yourself for the spirit to speak to you. And now he's talking about a word of caution. He says, there are counterfeit revelations, promptings from the devil, temptations. As long as you live in one way or another, the adversary will try to lead you astray. And that, that is a heavy, daunting statement right there. You're like, can I have a little respite? Can't I have like, can I have, <laughs> for instance, when I go on vacation next week, I'm like, just quiet and then nobody talk to me and just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. And I'm just going to sit and I'm going to cross stitch and I'm going to do nothing. And nobody's going to ask me any questions at all. And I don't have to work and all that stuff. Like, you need a vacation from work. You need it. But we also need a vacation from Satan. And I'm just like, can I have a, can I have one? Like a little respite? Like just, you know, and that's where being like Moroni comes in. You know, the devil never had any power over him. <sighs> if only. Okay. Then he says, the Lord reveals his will through dreams and visions, visitations, through angels, through his own voice, and through the voice of his servants. And this is where general conference comes in. If you're seeking personal revelation and you have been preparing yourself to receive it, hopefully, if you've been preparing, you will receive it this weekend. I have not been seeking personal revelation. It's not something... I feel like I need it this time. Like I don't need guidance or direction. Um, help with work. Yes, absolutely. 
but I haven't, like, there are no questions that I need answered or anything like that. You know, they say come to general conference with questions. I don't have any questions. I feel like the study this year has been really, really good. And I feel like with the daily reading on prayer and the read it, do it, I feel like, you know, I've been preparing my body and my mind to receive personal revelation. And I think it comes during this study time. So I, I don't think I'm going to have any big aha moments at general conference, but I do believe I'll feel the spirit and he will tell me what I need to do for the next, for the next six months. I don't know if I'm going to come up with any general conference goals. Maybe one, we talked about simplifying come follow me for next year and not have quite so many goals. I'm going to look for one goal, one goal, because this year was a lot. <laughs> I was looking, well, anyways, it's been a lot. Okay, and then he ends about talking about the comforter. And now do not suppose that you will be spared from sorrow, disappointment, failure, fear. Those come to all. They are essential for our testing. When sore trials come, you will learn why the Holy Ghost is called the comforter. And then he bears his witness. Um, I think this is a good a starting place when you're looking how does the spirit speak to me how do I know it's his voice or my voice or I need answers to this question I need guidance in my life I think this is a good starting point a very good starting point and sometimes we don't really keep in mind that preparing the body prepares the mind um, before before um, some people give a priesthood blessing they have to prepare you can't just like he comes home from work and you're like i need a priesthood blessing right now and he's just like whoa not possible i'm not there yet give me an hour or two right because he's just come he's just come from work he's had stress all that stuff he needs to get into his suit. He needs to pray. He needs to center and focus his mind. He needs to prepare his body and his mind to give that blessing. At least that's the experience I've noticed with priesthood holders in my life is that they need that moment to prepare, to get in tune. And we also need to prepare, prepare our bodies, prepare our minds. All right. That was personal revelation, the gift, the test, and the promise by Boyd K. Packer from October 1994. Now, let's do our daily reading for <laughs> heaven's sakes. What's today? Today's Thursday, the 10th? No, it's the 3rd. <laughs> Jumping ahead there. Okay, day 277. Uh, Spencer W. Kimball. Truly believing thy will be done. And in all our prayers, we remember our insufficiency, our limitations, our dependence, our lack of wisdom. Like children, we do not always know what is best for us, what is expedient. And so in all our prayers, we say thy will be done and mean it. We would not ask a church leader for advice, then disregard it. We must never ask the Lord for blessings, then ignore the answer. And so we pray, thy will be done, O Lord, thou knowest best, kind Father. I will conform, I will accept it gratefully. Well, we just want to highlight that for a second. I need to incorporate... I need to incorporate a saying like this into my prayers. Okay. All right. Um, so that was our general conference talk. And then tomorrow we're going to do third Nephi chapter 14. And let's end it with a read it, do it. It is the third. 
3 Nephi chapter 13, verses 19 through 34. They highlight verses 20 through 21. Where is your heart? There is your treasure. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Not my favorite. Okay. All right. That is all. Let's send it off with a prayer now. Who is it? Hi, you came just in time for prayer. Okay, you got to be quiet, babe. Okay, unless you want to say it. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for the opportunity to learn, read, hear a message about personal revelation and how we can prepare to hear thy word this weekend. We're so very thankful that General Conference is right here, right around the corner, and that we have this opportunity to break from the world, to spend a weekend listening to thy servants, feeling thy spirit, and finding ways that we can become better disciples of thee. We ask that thou would please prepare our hearts and our minds Inspire us to know how we can prepare for general conference better, how we can hear thy words better. We're so very thankful for thy love and guidance, for the constant hand in our life. We ask thee to please watch over the missionaries, Hannah, and all those who are serving, that they may be uplifted and strengthened, and that this weekend to them may be a motivating force to throw them deeper into the work and love the people more. We love thee, Father, and ask thee to please bless those who are suffering, that they can turn to thee and feel of thy loving comfort for them. We love thee, Father, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. It's Thursday. We're almost there. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.